Dr. Doreen Grand is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. Somebody wants to know, adult diagnosis seems like the hardest thing to get, and when you get it, it feels like people question it. Mm. Who can give a definitive qualified diagnosis, and how much should it relatively cost, realistically cost? Okay, yeah, that's great. So, you know, it is harder when it's an adult uh, because typically adults who are going to seek out a diagnosis are going to be very high-functioning. Right? Because if they're not very high functioning, this would have been identified er at an earlier stage. Yeah. So when you are high functioning, the diagnostic criteria are, are sort of, I don't want to say subjective, but ultimately a diagnostician has to decide, is this symptom present or not? Right. So for example, I was just uh, doing a video on, on the diagnostic uh, criteria, and let's say just the very first one, you know, the whole area of social communication. There has to be a series of symptoms present in the area of social communication. Now, uh, about a year ago or so, I was diagnosing an adult who, interestingly, it was kind of an interesting uh, um, experience for me because they wanted to receive the diagnosis yeah. of autism. And so they were kind of almost by textbook, telling me all the things that should be in the diagnosis. Right. And meanwhile, I was observing that this individual did not at all in any way exhibit sort of the, the difficulties that you experience with autism, even if it's very, very high functioning. And, you know, the biggest thing that you observe with an individual with autism is they have a difficult time interacting because they don't know all the kind of unwritten rules of social interaction. So for instance, they won't wait. They will jump into your conversation. They might not look at you when interacting or they might be too close. Uh, they will talk about things that are run on and not pertinent to the question you just asked. They will, there's all this other stuff that's, that's subtle stuff that actually indicates a, a difference in social communication. And, but it wasn't what this person was trying to do, was just trying to get the diagnosis. And actually what this, I ended up diagnosing them was social anxiety. Because there's a lot of people that experience anxiety and they think that it is like autism. And it's not. So the symptoms of autism, if you have an experienced diagnostician, they can sit with you. It'll be about a two-hour back-and-forth conversation where they will ask you a bunch of questions. And I mean, this is what I do. And then I would uh, either, at the end of the two hours, be able to give you a diagnosis or rule out the diagnosis. Or if I'm unsure, I would give you a series of questionnaires to fill out because you're high functioning and you would be able to fill out these questionnaires. And then with the help of those questionnaires, within an hour later, I'd be able to tell you one way or another, yes or no. And I would be able to tell you your severity level in each of the, the diagnostic areas. Now, that's an important thing that people tend to miss. Uh, in the social communication area, you can have a severity of one to three. And in the stereotypical repetitive area, you can have a severity of one to three. And that's also very important for the individual to know. So um, that's about the time frame that a diagnostician, I, and I do not recommend that you try to get it from your family doctor or from a psychiatrist or a psychologist who has not worked with autism before. It is very difficult for someone who is not familiar with autism to uh, be the diagnostician. So I really recommend if you are an adult and you think there is something going on, go seek out someone who has a lot of experience in the field of autism and get your diagnosis from them. What does it cost? Again, it depends on whether or not they have to do testing. Uh, I would say, generally speaking, a diagnostician will charge you somewhere around 
a thousand to maybe 1500 or so. But remember, these are licensed individuals that your insurance company should cover. So all you have to do is get in touch with your insurance provider and say, I feel like I need to go see a specialist or go see your family doctor and tell them what the issue is and they will refer you to a specialist and all of that cost of the diagnosis is covered. Just don't let them poo-poo you. Yeah. I think that that's, because a lot there's a lot of that. Um, but, but just I, like with everything else there is, you know, like yeah. you, you want to go get, I've been to like 20 doctors for my lower back pain and I still don't have a solution. Right, right. But can I also, can we talk about the levels of severity for a sure. second too? Because I sure. think there's a lot of misunderstanding about this. That, so there's one, two, and three, but all of them, even a one means you need support. Yes. Yes, and, and I think and, this is the. I know you're. You you. I want you to talk a little bit about the one, two, three. But I want parents to realize that sometimes your child gets diagnosed, and there. Oh, you always remind us that there's two numbers, but a lot of times pe people only walk away with one number. And a lot of times people will tell me I have. You know, a, my child has ASD level two, and it's not helpful because. The two domains are so different. So like, first of all, one, two, and three. One is I, you need support in that particular domain. Yeah. Two is you need, I think, significant support in that domain. Three is you need substantially significant support. So right. it's just, that's all it is, right? But the problem right now, as I see it, is that a lot of kids are being diagnosed and the, and the diagnost diagnostician says to them, when they say, okay, well, you know, what are you going to give me? My child qualified, and, but they're a 1-1. One, one. Mm -hmm. And then the school and the, the doctor and the insurance say, oh, your child is very high functioning. They don't need anything. And I'm like, yeah. the yeah. very thing says if they're a 1, need that means needs support. Yeah. But on the other side of it, too, I think for some of the adults, they walk away and say, I didn't get a diagnosis. I feel like I'm on the spectrum. I have some of these traits, but I didn't get a diagnosis. And I always say to them, are you are you working a job? Are you in a relationship? Do you like maybe you have areas in your life that you struggle with, but have you found a way to make them make them function? Because in order to qualify for that disorder, yeah, you need you, to. you have to need support. Right. And That's not right. everybody does. That's right. And you have to have these specific symptoms. Like, so for instance, anxiety disorder, right? Like, so there's a whole bunch of symptoms associated with anxiety disorder. And, and many of us suffer from some of them. Yeah. Many of us. I mean, I wake up sometimes, I woke up at 4 a.m. this morning with anxiety, right? <laughs> it's just, yeah. I mean, because I had a rough day yesterday. Yeah. So that's a very common thing, but that is, does not qualify me to get a diagnosis of anxiety disorder, generalized right. anxiety. It just doesn't because I do not meet all the criteria. And secondly, because as Shannon said, it is not disturbing my life. Right. right. So those are the things that are very necessary. People forget that. It's a really interesting, Shannon. You know, when, I, when you look at the diagnostic manual, it very specifically says, A, you have to meet the following criteria in the social communication disorders area, mm -hmm. area right, for autism and this bunch. B, you have to meet the following criteria in the repetitive self-stimulatory self stereotypical behaviors. That's those are the two domains. Right. C, these symptoms must have occurred before a certain age for right. you to experience it. And D, it cannot be due to other things. Right. And then overall, they need to be debilitating enough, right? right. So these are people skip all that other stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. But it is very important, and you're absolutely right. In fact, I think DSM-5 was very specifically written this way so that people would get support, yeah. even if they are a 1-1. Yeah. And we used to have this problem when people were diagnosed with PDD-NOS, exactly. which is the old way, which was pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified, which meant essentially high-functioning autism, right? And people wouldn't get the funding they needed just because of that. Right. So, yes, so that's kind of how it is. And I do recommend if you feel you have issues, it is important. It's really important that you try to seek out someone who can help you with the diagnosis. I'm happy to, by the way. People have written in to me and said, do you still do that? I do. It's hard for me to fit it in, but I do. And I, I see people on Zoom, telehealth. Yeah, but we just had... Um 
Dr. Melmid on a couple of weeks ago, and he has a center in Arizona where almost exclusively now they diagnose adults. Yeah. Yeah. So I would tell you guys to look at that. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here. Don't forget, you can watch Ask Dr. Doreen live every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time on autismnetwork.com. We hope to see you there.